Hello, this is Jess Ong Lee, and I put a 30 minute long pieces for Pusan National University special lecture. And then I introduced uh, again myself and this program, this uh, YouTube, YouTube program. And today is the first one I as I commented on uh, for this one. This is not the first book I produced in, uh, in 2015, but this is, this came out this year, a uh, couple of months ago, actually in June, Awakening Through Literature and Film, and then the subtitle is Into the Dancing Light. And I try not to be that much academic and I'm not gonna make it di difficult, but make it easy, try to uh, uh, try my best to do it. And um, uh, the first one, the chapter one is, why do we need the meditative mind? Present uh, present age, spirituality and films Parasite, Joker, and others. Here I'm talking about Parasite, the Korean movie that got um, uh, four Oscar, four Oscars uh, two years ago, and then also the Joker. But before that, we are to talk about the meditative mind. Meditative mind, because of the uh, spiritual leaders, so many spiritual leaders like uh, Eckhart Tolle, uh, Arya Shanti, and a whole lot of others. Uh, this is well known, uh, representing kind of meditative mind, but you don't have to think about the Buddhist uh, kind of materials and uh, sutras, for example, and so on. I'm not going to read any specific sutras these days soon. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, the base of my knowledge and my insights are uh, the materials of the Buddhism, Christianity, and uh, Western philosophy and so on and so forth. The first one is, the first title is, why do we need a meditative mind? At this point of beginning, let me show you this with you. This. This is uh, in yang design right, yin yang diagram. And this is also the center of the Korean national flag. Um, this means when you acknowledge anything or anybody outside of you, you put um, yourself here and feel superiority and depend, uh, uh, look down upon the other, on the lower side, or you place, so to speak, here on the lower side and feel jealous uh, or fear or stressed toward the upper side people or the class. But um, uh, this is the truth. It is not really truth. Uh, this is the truth of the phenomena. I would call. This is from the Book of Book of Movement or Book of Changes, uh, written many, many uh, years ago. I mean, like uh, 3,000, even 5,000 years ago, according to other people. Now here, what is really going on is this. It's not really horizontal, but it's uh, here toward the lower side and this goes up. And it means this and this are actually one. So 
uh, it's not, it's called binary opposition by the later structuralist and postmodernist, uh, post structuralist and postmodernist in, in the West. But uh, uh, this is, I think, the representative form in also uh, Tao Te Ching and, uh, and especially in Buddhism. Now, when I uh, ask any group of people, how many of you want to live a happy life? Of course, all of them, a hundred people out of hundred or a thousand uh, out of thousand just raise their hand, of course. And how many, when I ask them how many people want to live an unhappy life or a miserable life, of course, no question, no wonder there's none. It's just natural, but we have to put a question here. What is happiness, really? Yes, you can say uh, we live to be happy and but what is happiness? Usually we think uh, you, happiness is some kind of feeling of pleasure, okay, uh, without stressed mind. So we try to avoid this stressful situation and go for successful, so-and-so called successful situation. And that means having a lot of money, a lot of fame or a lot of knowledge, okay? Big fame or knowledge or even wisdom as we call it, uh, if you will and so on and so forth. But is that really happiness? Does have a lot of money mean really we are happy? Think, let's think about the word again uh, together now today. So we have to calm down and think about happiness and uh, unhappiness and so on and so forth again. Uh, in fact, the, what is called the truth self or the real I in Buddhism, or um, I know this is all of a sudden um, not really gradually understanding, but uh, sudden, suddenly coming word for them, but God in Christianity, or the truth, or the Tao, Do, Tao, Do is um, uh, in Korean word, Tao, T-A-O, that's very famous word, of course, in the Western world too. And it means the whole, like Jesus said, love yourself, no, sorry, love your neighbor as you love yourself, it means there's the people whom you love and then on the opposite, there are people whom you hate. And that's called binary, binary opposition. Uh, but in this case, it's not the truth. The truth means the whole, uh, the whole people like uh, Hegel, uh, these days Lacan and others call the whole, the whole is the truth. It means ultimate reality, ultimate reality, not just pieces of phenomenal reality, but the whole reality as one. Everything is one, all are one in one form. It's not the form at all. So um, I think therefore I am, as Rene Descartes said, means I compare and contrast this with this and this with this and so on and take superior, superior place or inferior place. But it always draws on the other side. So um, actually this is one, this is one. Uh, so 
it's not phenomenal, but the, it's the wholly different dimension, quote unquote dimension. But that dimension is not phenomenal, but behind or beyond or beneath the whole phenomena of the whole world or your own individual self or the whole universe. So uh, it's not only manifested in philosophy, uh, Eastern or Western, but in such great masterpieces like Hamlet and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So next time, uh, right after this one, I'm gonna talk uh, in a new video, I'm gonna talk about uh, Hamlet and Dr. Jekyll. I, to prove this. Thank you so much.